being like deep in nature and waking up to fresh air and, and beautiful views every day is the plus side to, to living on a boat. Hey y'all, today we are in England and Jen is going to give us a tour of her self-built boat and that she has been living already for two and a half years. Let's have a look. This is my boat Adi Shakti. This is the front of the boat and we've got a, a storage compartment at the front where I store my logs for winter. And just round the side there, there's a little um, opening where I fill the water tank. So um, we go to the water point and we attach the hose pipe into the water tank or we use the bottles to fill it manually if we run out while we're moored up. How big is the water tank? The water tank is a thousand litres oh. and it, we use a thousand litres in two weeks. We use the roof um, for yoga or for eating outside or chilling outside. This is basically our, our garden. And you got the solar panels? Yes, um, four solar panels, which is enough for us because all that we run really is um, the fridge. We don't have a telly or anything like that, so it's enough for the four solar panels. And lights, I guess, uh, are LED? LED lights on a 12 volt circuit. How big is the boat? The boat is 65 foot long by 12 and a half foot wide. So it, I, we could go five foot longer, but no wider because there's only three inches either side when we're in the lock. Okay. So it's one of the biggest boats on the, the Grand Union Canal, yeah. And so it's a bit trickier to, to use this lock? It's actually easier because we don't move. The narrow boats, they zigzag in the lock, but we don't move too much in, in the locks. So yeah, it's actually easier. Apart from you have to open both the lock gates and not just one. So this is the license number. Uh, I'm classed as a continual cruiser, so I don't have a permanent mooring. I move every two weeks and I have to do 32 kilometers in one direction per year. So somebody comes along on their bike and they write down the license number and where you are and that gets sent to the office and uh, they know your movements and then they choose whether or not they're gonna give you a license again the next year. <laughs> okay. Based on your movements. And what about winter if the uh, canal is frozen? If the canal's frozen, they let you stay. <laughs> You're not allowed to move when it's iced over because it damages the other boats. Um, some people do break through the ice if they have to move, but yeah, you're not meant to move in the, if it's frozen. And how much does it cost to have this license? It costs me £111 a month, and that covers water, bins, towpath maintenance, and my rent. <laughs> so basically it's your rent? Yeah. 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 Which is not bad. No. <laughs> and my electricity is free in the summer. <laughs> what about winter? I run the engine for two hours a day in the winter, which is about £50 a month in diesel to, to generate the electricity. Yeah. So you, you, you run just engine, you don't have separate like a generator? No, I don't have a generator. Um, a lot of boaters do, but they're very noisy. <laughs> and yeah, I run the engine for an hour in the morning and an hour at night. And then there's the solar picks up a bit of um, power during the, the day, during the but day yeah, day. it's mainly the, the engine run. Under here is my engine, and in here are my gas bottles, um, which run through to the, the stove. So the one gas bottle is about 50 pounds, and that lasts me 10 weeks. So it's uh, just cooking, or it's water heater? No, and... that's just for the oven, so it's the gas hob and the oven. The heating is a diesel system, which is in the engine bay. Um, and the, but in the winter, we don't really use the radiators because they don't work that efficiently. So there's a stove inside and we run it on coal. Hmm. So, so you have to have extra storage for coal? Well, I stack it up here and uh, a coal boat comes. So I, I ring them and I tell them how many bags I want and then they load them onto the boat. They do the gas bottles as well and they fill the diesel. Oh, so convenient. Yeah, <laughs> so nice. I don't have to do much for that. So this is my little garden and I grow my own herbs. I've got basil and lettuce. Um, my tomatoes I've already picked. But yeah, next year I'm hoping to put a, a garden on the roof and grow some more vegetables and, uh, and some fruit as well. This is my kitchen. 
It's um, a standard custom fit kitchen from IKEA, so I didn't have to have a tiny kitchen made. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of workspace. I have lost a little bit of worktop under the gunnel, but it still is a nice, sizable, workable kitchen. And I guess you don't, didn't worry about the weight? So yeah, I did have to make sure everything was balanced. So the, ki the children's bedrooms are on this side and the kitchen is on this side so that the boat was balanced. Yeah, but it could load quite a lot of weight. Yeah, I needed to put three tons into the boat because it came three tons too light. It has to sit low in the water. So yeah, I didn't have to worry about the weight. The scaff boards alone, they weighed a ton. Well. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, these are scaffold scaffold boards. So basically you just designed the kitchen and then they made for you what, yeah. what, how you wanted the cupboards and stuff. And yeah, else. so in here I've got a fridge uh, on a 240 volt circuit so it didn't have to be a 12 volt fridge and in here I have a freezer. Well, luxury. <laughs> yeah, and there I have a washing machine but I don't use it very much because it takes 50 litres per wash and that means that we would have to move the boat more often than two weeks. So I go to a laundrette for the, for the laundry. <laughs> okay, but you still can do it. That's nice. Yeah, this is in case I get a mooring. I mm. leave it here. This is my living room and it's also my workspace. So I do um, massage and holistic therapies on the boat. So my table goes here uh, when I'm working and, and it's also our living space as well. This is the dining area and it also doubles up as my office. So when I'm doing paperwork for my business, I will sit here with my laptop. And it's quite high ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you know the height? Or? Uh, it's six foot six and then six foot here. So uh, I'm, a, I'm five foot two and I can't reach the ceiling. <laughs> So you can jump and dance. Yeah. <laughs> and do yoga. <laughs> I'm a yoga teacher as well, so I teach yoga on the boat too. Like private lessons, because how many, yeah. how many people? Like I, well, I didn't have a sofa until two weeks ago, so I used to have four people along here and I would be here, but now it's just one-to-one -one yoga. But it's good because people can reach up. <laughs> and how did you come with the idea to build a boat and live on the, on the boat? I had enough money to buy a boat, because I was self-employed, I couldn't get a mortgage. So, um, yeah, I just went on a walk down the canal one day and saw the boats and was like, ah, that's the life I want. <laughs> so uh, I was looking for a three-bedroom boat, but they're very hard to come by. Um, so I ended up designing this. Uh, so I drew the floor plan and told them where I wanted all the windows because I've got two children, so I needed um, a bedroom each for them. So yeah, I drew the floor plan and um, the boat builders had the steel work done in seven weeks and then it was bought from Liverpool on a lorry down here and then it was put into the water using a crane. Oh. And then uh, I fit out the inside so it didn't come with the kitchen or, or any of these walls. It was just a completely empty shell. So yeah, we did the the inside work. So how a, long did it take you? It took 10 weeks to fit out the inside, so 17 weeks in total. Not bad. Yeah. And do you mind sharing the cost? It cost, well, I bought the steel, the steel work was bought just before COVID, so just before the steel prices went up. So it cost me 87,000 for the, the boat and the engine. And they also did the, the ply lining and they had the electrics in as well. Um, and then another 10,000 to fit it out. But which is not bad. No, it would cost a lot more now though. Mm. <laughs> this is the main, the main heat source in winter. So we all get changed around the fire because it's so cold in the bedrooms. <laughs> But it, this is with wood because you have with coals, you have with so diesel, I, so it's a third I, actually. Yeah, no, so I, I light the fire using wood and then I keep it going through the night with coal because it lasts longer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are radiators, they just don't get hot enough for, for winter. So the first bedroom down the corridor is my daughter's bedroom. So I had to maximise as much uh, space as I could in the children's bedroom. So I've built cabin beds for them 
and they've got small single mattresses so they're a little bit smaller than a standard single bed and then the children have both got uh, space under their beds for storage or for playing or for a guest <laughs> or for a guest <laughs> yeah <stay> <laughs> And then they, yeah, they've got little storage above their beds, and there's where they have their wardrobe. So their bedrooms are only five foot wide and nine foot long. <laughs> and the second bedroom. And then the next bedroom is my son's bedroom, which is very similar layout. The sides just weren't as high because he was a bit older, so he wasn't likely to roll out of bed. But again, small single uh, desk and many, many books. <laughs> which, you, which you don't see often nowadays. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we don't have a telly, so the children read a lot when they're, when they're with me, yeah. And the next room is the bathroom but with no bath, <laughs> the oh, shower Oh, it's very room. spacious. Yeah. How big so, is the shower? Oh, I don't know the size of the shower. It's a, a double shower though. So, and yeah. it's got a, a rainfall, a rainfall head. And um, we've got a compost toilet. It's a, a simple toilet and it's divided into two sections. So the liquids go through a funnel into a bottle at the front. And then the solids, I have cleaned the toilet, <laughs> the solids go in the back and then we put sawdust on top to keep the smell down. But also there is this 12 volt fan which is attached to this pipework that goes into a carbon filter which takes the, the smell away as well. And nobody has ever said that it smells in here. <laughs> it's actually, I find it opposite. Yeah. Compared to, to flashing toilet. Yeah. It smells much less. And um, so there's three options for toilets on boats. There's a pump out, which is where the it flushes and it goes to a tank under your bed. And then you have to go to a place to get it pumped out. Yeah, like black tank. Yeah, but they cause a lot of smell and problems, especially if the canal freezes and you can't move. And then there's the Elson toilets, which is the uh, chemical toilets. Um, but again, you have to take them to the Elson point. But we compost the solids and the liquids actually go in the hedges because the nitrates are good for the plants and that's what the CRT advise we do with the liquids. I didn't realise how spacious the boat would be, so this is actually the first thing I bought off of uh, eBay. <laughs> and uh, I probably could have got a bigger sink. This is my bedroom which is lovely and spacious and it has a full-size double bed and I have this lovely area where I can sit and drink my tea in the morning and um, yeah have a, a front deck as well which is nice to to sit in if there's sun setting at the front of the boat it's nice to sit here and watch the sunset <laughs> and you have two wardrobes and the working desk. Yeah, it's my babe station. <laughs> my makeup, my makeup area. Yeah. It's nice. the The bolt is so high that you actually can stand. Stand on the bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, my children like to jump on the bed. <laughs> and the bookshelf. Yeah, my. And this is my library. <laughs> so, and the, when you're heating it up, the. Oh, all spreads equally the heat no in the winter this is the coldest room so i wake up and there's ice on the inside of the windows and i i sleep with a beanie hat and pajamas and a dressing gown because yeah the children get the heat from the fire but it doesn't reach this far <laughs> but they say it's healthy <laughs> yeah and i have lots of hot water bottles in the bed as well i put them in before i come in so it's nice and warm <laughs> I hope you find this video informative and you found out something for yourself as well. The social media of Jenna will leave in the description below, so make sure to check out her Instagram accounts and see you in the next one. Cheers! Bye!